Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you've been following my videos, you know I've had these two DIY sticker books. The pages are of some wax papers. I'm totally unsatisfied with them for various reasons. Firstly, the pages are translucent. So I had to constantly move this white paper behind for a better view. Secondly, the wax paper is not as friendly as I thought it'd be for stickers. I've had many torn stickers like this. So enough is enough. I need a new sticker book. So as per my video thumbnail that you saw, I'm gonna do a new sticker book today. Just know, this won't be a tutorial per se, just a video of my processes. So first, I'm gonna need some release papers. These are basically the glossy backing papers at the back of your standard sticker sheets. The ones I have here are double-sided, also used for diamond painting. I'll work on them piece by piece, by folding each into half like this. Using a bone folder will definitely help. I'll do it to the rest of the remaining papers. Once all folded, I'll take four of those papers and group them together like this. making it into one signature. In total, I eventually made 35 signatures, as I had 140 sheets of those release papers. This will be one thick book. I have here two more release papers, only these ones are both one-sided. Likewise, for them, I'll fold them both into halves too. Now, taking two of those earlier prepared signatures, I'll put the new one-sided papers as a new outer layer each making sure the glossy side is inside. That's one done. All these are A4 sized by the way, so when folded in half, becomes A5. Now, with these two special signatures, I'll put one at the back of the main pile and the other at the front of the pile. This will help with the binding later on. Here's a simple DIY book cradle I made. On this folded thick cutstock A5 in height, I marked some holes of 2cm equal ranges. I drew an arrow here, so that I know this is the constant end for the cradle. So taking one of the many prepared signatures, I'll push it all the way to the cradle's end, making sure all the papers are lined up properly. Then, place the whole marker cut tucked on top. Using an awl, I'll start poking through these marked holes, all the while making sure the papers don't move. Make 
sure all the holes are properly punched through. I'll continue doing this to the remaining 34 signatures. Eventually, the signature holes should all line up if punched properly. A spool of wax thread, and a curved needle. Thread that in. Give a simple knot at one end I'll basically cut the thread about 6 times the height of the paper I'll allow the other end of the thread short and free like this unknotted Starting with the first signature with the one-sided paper I'll start doing the first stitch from the first hole here Honestly, it was really difficult filming the stitching So, my apologies for the bad camera work I'm not the best teacher for this kind of stitching So, I won't explain this part much you may browse and search for book binding stitching videos on YouTube if you want to learn properly. Making a knot at the last hole Then pulling it outside Attaching the second signature now Make sure the holes are aligned I'll work on with the rest of the signatures with the same stitching method I'm using the half kettle stitch here Seriously, filming a stitching process is too complicated. I didn't expect this. By the way, I clip up the first signature to avoid the thin paper from crumpling due to the constant flipping. I will need to constantly tighten some of the stitches, but not too tight. Of course, in the course of all these signatures, I had threaded many more threads as one is definitely not enough. Just knot them up and continue a new one as normal. So, 
I'm on the last signature here with the one-sided paper. Knot it up nicely at the end. My DIY book press. I let it stand on its side. Insert the text block. Make sure it's straight. Pretty challenging and it's so thick. Cutting off those extra long knots first. Using my PVA white glue. <laughs> Too much there. Let's punch it up. I let the first coat dry up. Here's using my other finishing bottle of PVA glue as the second coat. Let that dry up again. Third coat. Dry. Here are two A4 pattern papers I had in my stash. I wanted this pink one, but only had one left. Well, the book's for my own use, so I'll not be picky. Fold them in half too. Let's take out my dry text block. Placing a rough paper as protection. With another piece of paper, I'll make a small margin masking at the edge of the sewn text block here. Ah, too much glue again. I'll basically glue up the exposed margin there. Taking one of the folded pattern papers, I line it up to glue it down. Line the underside of the patterned paper with a rough paper so it won't dry messily later. 
Now turn it the other way around to work on the other side. Align the other patterned paper. It's not exactly sized, but that's the beauty of DIYs. Imperfections. Likewise, underline it with a rough paper. So, once all dried, the best thing for a thick book like this is if you have an industrial book trimmer to get clean, straight cut edges on all three sides of the book, which I obviously do not have. So I'll just leave it uneven like this. It's best if you have a gauze fabric, but this roll of bandage is the only closest thing I have. Unfortunately, the height of the roll is smaller than the book's thickness. By right, I should have something wider than my book's thickness. No matter, I'll just risk it and layer two pieces. Allow some extra flaps out on the sides. Glue them onto the spine. So let that stand dry. Next, I have this scrap of thin craft tissue paper that I seldom use. About the height of the book too, wider than the spine of course. It'll be my second supportive layer on top of my bandages. Glue it down too. The whole purpose here is to support the whole of the thick spine as much as possible. So with all that dried, it's time to do some cleanup. I'll give an inward angled trim to those supportive layers. The same for the other side. Two different pink ribbons cut into a good amount of length. Test 
interesting where to start gluing them on always prefer to have a long extended ribbon and glued to the back of my book spines While that's still wet, here are the end bands I made myself. Video link above. I'd cut two about the width of the spine. And bend for the other side here, making sure the protruding string is stuck nicely to the spine edge. I'll measure up the area of my spine. Here is some thick cardboard of the spine size and two A5 cardboards. pink book cloth basically fabric that you stick very thin paper onto let's start testing the placements of the cardboards I also made a simple spacer with the same cardboard the same thickness about 1.5 cm in width it's important to have a good space for the book to open properly later Make sure you have about 1 inch gap around. Let's start gluing up the first board. Spacer. Hmm, that's a bit longer than my A5 cardboard. Use the spacer. Make sure everything's aligned. And yeah, I just had to trim this off. Ugh. With the width of my ruler, I'll just trace up a trim line for the excess book cloth there. Then I'll trim up an angle to all four corners. A rough paper for protection. Let's start gluing in the cloth. 
The bone folder for assistance. Once the cover is dried, line up the patterned paper with a rough paper for the final gluing. Paste down those extra flaps first. Now, the trickiest part for me with book binding is always this part, lining the patterned end papers properly. Still needs a lot of practice. So I know I won't be making a perfect job here too. A rough paper slip as it dries. And yeah, do not glue up the spine. Another rough paper slip for protection as it dries. Book presses back. I've covered my outer bags with a rough paper each side. Place it inside the press. And let it sit for a day. Time to take the book out. Throw away all those rough papers. Finally time to trim up the bookmark ribbons. I'll burn the ends of each so they won't get frayed in the future. Just gonna go simple with the cover decorations. With this die cut. A simple brush letter title.
books ready. And of course, imperfections here, but I don't give a hack. I did try trimming a bit of the edges here to size it up. Even my old wax paper sticker books have imperfect edges. Definitely not good craftsmanship. And this is how the threads look in the middle inside. Double sided so I can paste stickers on both sides. Anyway, I'm pretty happy how the book turned out. Not perfect by any means, but it's good enough. So let's start this initiation of sticker filling. Honestly, I would love to transfer all the old stickers from my two old books into here, but let's put that aside first. For now, I have a new box of stickers here. Let's sort them out first. So I managed to fill in the first pret here. And for the overprotective old me, I have this PVC book cover to save the book from any potential dirt. Cut to about 3 weeks in, I fill about one fifth of this thick book. So this was the end of the first one-sided signature, hence I didn't place any sticker here. Lone sticker here. These two, two. The visible strings here. This was the group of stickers this lone cat was from, since I had no more space for it. So that's it. I'm done with my new sticker book. Tune in to my channel to see how I make use of it in my journaling videos. For now, happy journaling and bye-bye.